How should I price my logo project? Or how about yung web design? Ano ba yung tamang rate? Hourly ba? Or per package? So those are the common questions na na-encounter ko and yung nare-receive ko sa inbox ko sa Facebook and sa Instagram mediums. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to price or negotiate your logo or web design project. Especially if you're uh, a freelancer and or soon to be a freelancer here in the Philippines. Hi guys, I'm Franz. I'm a freelance graphic and web designer here in the Philippines. So if you're new here to my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell button down below para updated ka sa mga upcoming videos ko. Okay, so going back, there are two general factors to be considered when coming up with a price or a rate for your logo and web design projects. So number one, local or abroad or international. When I say local, meaning uh, if the client is residing here in the Philippines or in your country, on the other hand, you international meaning, uh, of course, outside your country or outside here in the Philippines. Number two factor or number two general factor is yung industry ng client, ng business or ng company, and kung startup ba siya, um, small company or business, or yung mga known companies or big companies na siya. So those are the two factors or two general factors to be considered bago ka magkaroon ng or bago ka mag-decide ng sarili mong rate dun sa project or dun sa prospect client na yun. So, let's start with the logo. So, for the logo, there are sub factors to be considered when pricing your logo project. So, number one is the number of concepts and revision of your logo. Number two is yung style ng logo. Is it monogram? Ito yung mga initials ng, ng mga logo, like yung IBM, yung mga ganyang logo. Word marks ba siya? Ito yung like Amazon, Jollibee, McDo. So, sila yung mga mismong name ng business or company. Icon ba siya or abstract, mascot, or emblem type of logos. So number three, is deliverables. What are the files included on your logo project or all-in na ba siya or excluded yung raw files or yung tinatawag nilang editable files? Yung mga AI, um, PSD, pwede. In general, as a rule, based din sa mga expert, especially if you're a member of Graphic Artist Philippines, so marami nagtatanong doon kung Magkano ba yung cost or yung i-rate nila dun sa project na yun? So, an average rate as practiced by is minimum of 5,000 pesos or that's 100 US dollars. And it can go up to 100,000 or that's 2,000 US dollars. It depends rin talaga dun sa complexity ng, ng project and dun sa sinabi ko mga sub uh, factors. So, pwede rin siyang mas mababa doon sa sinabi ko or dun sa, uh, based dun sa mga experts, if, especially if you're gaining more exposure or some exposure, and then it can go higher pa, especially if you're with the team or an agency and of course, if you're really an expert or matagal ka na sa industry, of course, syempre, uh, mas mag-charge ka na ng mas malaki. So, sa minimum or yung mga average price, Madalas, hindi sinasama ng designers yung mga raw files or yung tinatawag nilang editable files. So, you should consider mentioning it to your client para alam nila yung expectations na mare-receive nila or yung mga files na mare-receive nila. And pwede nyo ring mention na if gusto nila nung raw files, they can you can charge it for a separate amount. So, next is pricing your web design project. So, similar with logo as mentioned before or as mentioned earlier, there will uh, there are sub-factors to be considered, especially dito sa web design. Masyadong broad kasi siya, unlike with the logo. Though, medyo similar, pero mas malaki lang or mas madami lang talaga yung factors dito sa web design and development. So, number one is the type of website you will design. So, is it a company or an informative website? Portfolio ba siya or yung parang gallery website? 
personal or blog, non-profit, e-commerce, or yung mga web portal. Number two is the number of pages needed on the website. Of course, mas marami, mas magiging expensive. So number three, may sketch or yung sinasabing wireframe na ba nakasama or coming from the client. Meaning may flow or uh, sitemap na ba na ibibigay sa'yo para makapaggawa ka ng design. As in, wala talaga at ikaw yung mag strategize ng lahat ng yon. So, from style guide to a wireframe to mock-up. So, number four is the number of website concepts. Pwede ka kasing magbigay ng another concept na medyo different dun sa initial na binigay ng client. In that way, they can choose and see the big difference. Siyempre, mas maganda yung gawin mo sa second version para, di ba, alam mo na yung kung ano yung pipiliin nila. Fifth, number of revisions. Uh, major revisions or minor revisions. Sixth, uh, this is the important one. Kasama ba yung development sa package na gagawin mo? Pwede yung design na yun, pwede mong gawin through WordPress, or Webflow, or kung marunong kang mag-code, siyempre, gagawin mo custom code. Kung kasama ang development, take these factors as well. Included na ba yung domain and hosting or ikaw yung magpo-provide ng domain and hosting? Yung maintenance of the website, ikaw rin ba? Or bahala na silang mag-maintain? Or meron silang um, team nila or staff na mag-maintain ng website? Pero usually, kapag sa maintenance or tinatawag na retainer, This is a separate uh, contract na ibibigay mo dun sa client. So yung mga, kung ikaw ay magde-develop, ano ba yung mga special functionalities na dapat ilagay sa website? Appointment calendar, yung mga chatbot, membership, mga logins, and so on. And then, yung mga tools na gagamitin mo sa pag-develop ng website, may yearly ba na dapat bayaran? <laughs> That's a lot. Dami. So personally, I have several packages when it comes to uh, web design and development. Kasi it will depends on the needs of the client rin eh. And it will be better na magkaroon kayo ng or set up a one-on-one -on -one call. Kahit short call, kahit 30 minutes lang na discovery call. Pwede through Skype or Zoom. Para at least... Uh, malaman mo yung kailangan nila and yung gusto nila sa isang website. Then, dun sa written packages mo, um, adjust nyo na lang yung rate. Depende dun sa mga napag-usapan nyo dun sa short meeting nyo. So, let's say, if design lang, like a standard one page design lang, as in super simple lang, pwede nyo siyang i-rate ng minimum of 15,000. Sample lang, ha? Then, if kasama yung development naman, dun sa one page na simple layout na yon, it can start from 20 and above. Again, walang exact number or rate dahil magdedepende talaga ito dun sa needs and wants ng clients and kung paano mo siya i-execute. So, minsan sa isang website, nagmamahal rin siya. Like, kahit sobrang simple lang ng website, pwede nyo i-charge yun ng talagang mahal like six figures five or six figures kasi hindi lang naman magbe-base talaga sa design or layout. Magbe-base yun kasi dun sa um, ideas, sa strategy mo na ilalagay mo dun sa website. Like kung ikaw, ikaw yung lahat ng gagawa dun sa website, so mas magmamahal yun. And kahit gawin mo siya ng sobrang bilis, like three days or one week lang, pwede mong i-charge ng mahal yun kasi it, it will be based on your strategy and kung paano mo sinov yung problem ng client kasi ang ang importante kasi dito is how you is yung problem solving so yung iba naman like yung kung alam niyo yung Fiverr iba naman doon mura di ba pag nakita niyo doon ang mura ng mga charge nila why kasi iyon yung mga mga templated design na siya so kung ako si client at may i-hire ako doon sa Fiverr syempre kung lalo na kung tipid yung client, di ba, kung wala siyang masyadong budget. So, pwede nila i-hire yun, like, bibili nila yung template. I-charge lang yun ng, iba na, ikita ko, $20, $50 lang. Kasi, mabilisan lang siya na kukunin niya ng designer yung mga uh, files, like yung text, yung images, then 
hmm, isang salpakan lang yan. Then, i-deliver na lang nila dun sa client. Pero, the, yun nga, sinasabi ko, the strategy, yung mga ideas mo, syempre, wala dun. Kasi, yun yung mga mabilisang website lang na, na, syempre, hindi masyadong na, na-focus, unlike yung mga, uh, personally sa akin, yung ginagawa ko, syempre, dun yung dedication and effort. Nakikita talaga yung result na, na magigain ng client at the end. So, before matapos itong pricing discussion natin, Um, I just want to leave a reminder to all of you watching this video na kapag may pag-negotiate ka sa client, make sure na confident ka. So yes, make sure na confident ka sa pagbitaw ng numbers. Why? Clients will know kasi kung confident ka sa pag-discuss ng rate mo. Like for a simple audio call lang. Maririnig kasi nila yung the way na paano mo bitawan yung salita ng numbers na na hinihingi mo dun sa rate at saka kung video call makikita yung reaction ng face mo or ng body language mo kung hindi ka confident dun sa pag-negotiate ng project rate mo. And syempre, there's a chance na maghahagal sila kasi alam nila na ay, hindi confident to na pwede ko pang babaan. ba diba? Ayaw naman natin na mangyari yun. And personally, na-experience ko na rin yun. Kaya, sinishare ko na sa inyo beforehand or bago pa kayo maki- makipag-negotiate or para at least, diba, alam nyo na next time kung ano yung gagawin nyo. Also, ito ay natutunan ko kay Chris Do or The Future. Kung alam nyo sa YouTube, uh, check nyo yung channel na yun. Marami kayong matutunan doon. I learned from Chris Do or dun sa mga sa team niya, sa lahat naman ng Toto, kay Matthew and Sina. For example, kapag nagbitaw kayo ng price, like pag tinanong kung magkano, magkano yung rate or investment na tinatawag nila, just state na like say $1,000. That will be $1,000. Period. End your sentence with a period. Huwag na kayong magsabi pa ng ibang, na another sentence, like yung parang because, yung mga ganon, that's $1,000 because. Wait for their reaction first. Kasi kung hindi naman nag-react dun sa pressure, ibig sabihin, kahagat sila. Or may budget talaga na, ay, okay pala, ba diba? So, kung hindi naman sila nanghihingi ng, like, ng reason kung bakit in yung price, huwag kayong mag-re-reason out as much as possible. But, kung nanghihingi sila, then it's time to justify, to justify your rate. Investment kasi nila yan dun sa business nila. So, they will invest in you, give them the pros of why should they hire you or why should they uh, pick or choose your given proposal or your given project rate. Lastly, don't ever, ever, ever forget yung contract na nandun yung terms and conditions nyo na pinag-usapan nyo verbally or in written. Para at least, di ba, may consent kayo sa isa't isa. Para kasi syempre, di ba, pag nag yung decision niya bigla in the middle of your project. At least, meron ka may papakita na, oy pinirmahan mo to. <laughs> Ganun talaga. Na nagpirmahan kayo na hanggang dun lang yung scope ng projects. And syempre, if may additional na gusto niyang ipagawa, dapat nandun rin sa contract mo and sa terms and conditions mo na for any additional na gagawin mo, Siyempre, meron yung that will be a separate price or rate, di ba? Okay, kung nakahapot kayo dito sa clip na to, congrat! Alam niyo na kung ano or paano nyo ipaprice yung logo or web design project nyo. Especially sa mga soon-to-be freelancer na marami nagtatanong kung paano ba i-price, magkano ba i-price. Sorry kung hindi ako makapagbigay ng exact numbers kasi nga, Magde-depende talaga sa iyo yon sa scope ng client pero at least di ba nagbigay ako ng ng like an idea kung paano niyo sisimulan yung pag-price and pwede niyo na ma-compare rin dun sa iba like kung may kakalala kayo na, na freelancer or na designer na pwede yung pagtanungan kung magkano sila next start yung mga ganun so pwede niyo i-compare at pwede nyo simulan rin dun, dun sa rate na yon. So, if you enjoy and you found this video or this topic helpful, let me know in the comments down below kung may reaction ka, negative, positive reaction, or may another, like, ideas ka pa or suggestions sa akin and sa iba rin mga kabasa. Just feel free to write 
there in the comments below para at least mabasa ko and syempre makapag-reply ako sa'yo. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel para sa mga upcoming videos ko and my encourage ako na mag-shoot mag pa ng video for more like for free about topics for freelancing, sa mga web design tutorials, that's soon, super soon, soon, soonest. So, I'm also most active on my Instagram. Ayan, no? At Friends Esco Designs. So, feel free to follow me there and DM kayo. Just say hi, napalood ko yung video mo sa YouTube and yes, I surely reply to you there. Thanks again, guys, for watching this video and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!